Prevention of Money Laundering Act. The CBI does it under the Prevention of Corruption Act. I am told uh, Riyanka is in fact uh, live with us now. And uh, Riyanka, you were there in the court when the proceedings were on, uh, following which uh, Arvind Kejriwal was given four more days of... Uh, uh, the ED was given four more days of uh, custody of uh, the Delhi Chief Minister. Uh, the Ahmadmi Party continues to maintain there is no case. In fact, Kejriwal himself argued on his behalf today in the court. Uh, what is your sense uh, from here on? Uh, you think that this is the last time that ED has been given uh, custody of the Delhi Chief Minister? Or you think that ED has more material up its sleeves and... Uh, it could be the same picture again on April 1. Right, see the setback for Arvind Kejriwal in fact continues uh, from uh, the court and uh, how as we see at this point in time uh, that uh, uh, the, there has been given four days uh, extension to Arvind Kejriwal uh, when it comes uh, to the Enforcement Directorate. They have been given an upper hand here. Uh, on the 1st of April is what we are getting to know uh, that Arvind Kejriwal will once again be produced in front of the court, uh, the Rouse Avenue Court at 11.30 a.m. So what is going to likely happen in the next four days are the four grounds on which the ED sought an extension Firstly, uh, that Arvind Kejriwal will be confronted with the documents that have been seized uh, during the raids at the Ahmadmi Party uh, leader's premises. And uh, secondly, what the ED maintains that Arvind Kejriwal have been evasive uh, during the in interrogation, which is why he needs to be confronted and uh, he has to give proper answers and cooperate with the Enforcement Directorate. Well, also at this point in time, what we are getting to know is that in all likelihood in the next four days, Arvind Kejriwal and the other cues in the case, uh, be it Manish Sisodia, uh, be it uh, BRS leader K. Kavita, they might be put on face to face and confronted together uh, uh, by the Enforcement Directorate. And also the money trail uh, which is being uh, probed, the entire money trail, which is why we saw how uh, in Goa today, the Ahmadmi Party, Goa chief was also summoned by the Enforcement Directorate uh, because they are probing the 45 crore out of the 100 crore kickbacks that was huge during the Goa Assembly elections uh, for uh, the campaigning purposes. So several developments are going to take place. The ED is going to make a strong case against Arvind Kejriwal. But the Aam Aadmi Party and Arvind Kejriwal both are uh, saying that the arrest is illegal, that the remand is illegal. And uh, they have also said that the ED does not have enough evidence. Uh, the Aam Aadmi Party has in fact challenged the fact uh, that on what grounds is Arvind Kejriwal uh, being arrested. This is what has been in fact argued in the court as well so we have to wait and watch uh, whether the ED will be given an extension at this point in time we also see how the CBI is also in all likelihood to come in and seek custody for Arvind Kejriwal so heat is in, uh, indeed increasing for the Delhi Chief Minister. Okay the heat is on uh, thank you so much Riyanka for those updates uh, but uh, uh, we stay with the story, but with a different angle, which is uh, a foreign policy aspect emerging a day after India summoned uh, U.S. diplomat uh, deputy envoy in their mission here and objected to the remarks on Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's arrest made by the state's State Department in Washington, D.C. The U.S. reiterated its call for fair, transparent, timely legal processes. Same spokesperson, Matthew Miller, he said that it was aware of the Congress party's allegations that tax authorities had frozen some of their bank accounts. India has now hit back at the United States uh, with the Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Ranjit Jaswal today setting the record straight. Listen in. Questions regarding uh, the U.S. State Department spokesperson's comment. As you know that we've already... Yesterday, India had lodged its strong objection and protest with the senior official from the U.S. Embassy with regard to the comments made by the U.S. State Department. The recent remarks by the State Department are unwarranted. Any such external imputation on our electoral and legal processes is completely unacceptable. In India, legal processes are driven only by the rule of law. Anyone who has similar ethos 
especially fellow democracies, should have no difficulty in appreciating this fact. India is proud of its independent and robust democratic institutions. We are committed to protect them from any form of undue external influences. Mutual respect and understanding form the foundation of international relations, and states are expected to be respectful of the sovereignty and internal affairs of others. All right, moving on. The Supreme Court controversy is only getting bigger by the day after 600 lawyers opened up about pressure on the top court. A letter to the Chief Justice of India led by Harish Salve, among others. Uh, Prime Minister has called out now the attempt to browbeat and bully the top judiciary. In fact, the letter was occasioned by innuendos and uh, attempts at colouring the perception about the Supreme Court by making charges like bench fixing by a certain lobby. And uh, I am told we are being joined in by Mr. Manan Mishra. He is uh, one of the signatories, senior lawyer, who's, uh, uh, who's uh, part of the process of uh, trying to get attention on this lobby. A very good evening to you, Mr. Mishra. Uh, if you could tell us what occasioned this letter, which is uh, expressing not just disaffection, but an element of frustration also at this uh, sense of entitlement that this lobby has, that they can, they can try to influence uh, administrative aspects of the Supreme Court of the country as well. What yes. occasioned this letter? See, just to uh, mount a pressure, it was a pressure tactic by a handful of lawyers of the Supreme Court. They wrote a letter to the Honorable Chief Justice of India and they made several allegations in that, that the judiciary is being uh, uh, guided and the benches are being fixed at the instance of somebody. So, uh, 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 baseless allegations were made against the, our judiciary and the institution. Therefore, myself, Mr. Harish Salve and other 600 lawyers, we wrote to the Chief Honorable Chief Justice of India not to take notice of such uh, frivolous and baseless letters and, and on the other hand, to take actions against such elements who are trying to browbeat our judiciary. Okay, sir, if you, could, uh, if you could share, who are these lawyers uh, and uh, what are their connections which makes them so confident of uh, trying to hector and dictate even the topmost court of the country? See, some of the lawyers, everybody knows, they are uh, politically attached with some of the other parties. And they, all the times, whenever some political issue comes, whenever some issue with regard to the corruption comes, whenever the issue of a politician involved in the corruption that comes, they start doing this. Even in the year 2018-19, they did the same thing. They uh, write some letter, make it viral, viral and then uh, b b in the, through social media, they want to, and they try to malign the image of our judiciary, our judges, our, our Supreme Court. Therefore, you know, the, the election, Lok Sabha elections are going to be held. At this moment, writing a letter, baseless letter to the Honorable Chief Justice of India, making so many baseless allegations and thereafter giving it to the social media, this is very dangerous for the democracy of the uh, democratic setup of the country, uh, dangerous uh, for the institution. We the moment we came to know about it, we also wrote to the Honorable Chief Justice of India not to take notice of this. The public of our country, the, the general common man, the lawyers, the legal fraternity, they are fully aware of the intent and the motive behind such letters. You know... Okay, the, but uh, then uh, is there going to be follow-up? Is there going to be any follow-up, Mr. Mishra, on... Uh, on this letter to make sure that these kind of motivated pressure tactics are not used again? See, it is for them. We have also uh, actually requested the Honorable Chief Justice to take some action. At least it's a matter of contempt. You know, some of the, the uh, judges by name, they have been blamed. 
it's very serious matter the, naming the judges it is of course the kejriwal you know he is in jail the the day he was arrested by ed a petition was filed before the supreme court the case was mentioned it was fixed at 2 pm a special bench was constituted the moment they saw that uh, uh, they are not going to get a favorable order then they would do it they moved the high court high court also it, it, the petition was totally frivolous it was without jurisdiction the uh, jurisdiction lies with the special court and the magistrate the remanding magistrate the remanding court but purposely they moved the higher courts knowing it full well the position of law they know but they move before the courts and they know that they are not going to get any favorable order courts cannot bypass the the, the settled principle of law they start doing this all all such mischiefs they are doing at right. the time of election all, all such mischiefs they are doing right at the time obviously seems like a motivated mischief and that's why you had to uh hit back with another letter so that at least uh, a buzz is created awareness is created thank you so much uh, mr manan mishra for joining us on that note uh, uh we slip into a short break this story by the way is going to trend uh, over the evening and is going to be the debate part of the debate at 9 pm with onup goswami do watch in and uh, on the other side Yet another controversy hits Ashoka University as students resort to posh casteism, raise anti-Brahmin slogans. Also under scanner for forex case, uh, Mohua Moitra skips ED summons, seen evading Republic's direct questions as well. MIT has been ranked India's number 1 private university for the 11th year by India Today a testimony to MIT's world class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students Good evening and welcome ladies and gentlemen things have got really complicated today for Arvind Kejriwal He put together all the lawyers he put together some of the most formidable lawyers in India to fight his case And these criminal lawyers the topmost in the country gave everything they had to defend him everything they had to question his arrest They put forth all their arguments but they still lost in court They question the use of approvers. They question the timing of the arrest. They question the intent of the agency, but they still lost in the court. Loss after loss after loss after loss in court for Arvind Kejriwal and the Aam Aadmi Party. Now, viewers, if there is no scam in Liquor Gate, why do the biggest lawyers of the country lose in court when they stand up to fight for the Aam Aadmi Party? Are the courts biased too? or is it the reality that there is too much evidence that the agencies have shown and the agencies have shared with the courts with the judges which makes even giving bail impossible for the court consider this they are not even getting bail manish sodeya satendra jain sanjay singh arvind kejriwal denied bail inside jail the denial of interim relief by the delhi high court in the case of kejriwal's arrest is yet another courtroom loss for the aam aadmi party Now any time the Aam Aadmi Party tells you there is no scam just ask one question if there is no scam how come you are always losing in court And we all know that in every case of arrest and bail in every case of arrest and bail the courts look at only one fact the courts ask whether there is a prima facie case that can be built against the accused if there's no prima facie case you get bail But here there is a prima facie case there's a lot of scam there's a crores of rupees which have been made hundreds of crores the situation is so complicated for arvind kejriwal now that unless he wins tomorrow hindu dharm mein shakti shabd hota hai hum shakti se lad rahe hain ek shakti se lad rahe hain 
हिंदी अलायंस ने अपना घोषणा पत्र शक्ति को खत्म करने के लिए किया है मैं इस चुनौती को स्वीकार करता हूं और मैं इन सबसे स्वरूप माताओं बहनों की रक्षा के लिए जान की बाजी लगा दूंगा कांग्रेस को जब से कर्नाटका में मौका मिला है तो इन्होंने कर्नाटका को अपना एटीएम बना दिया है Welcome back. After a break for almost 15 years, actor Govinda is back in the political arena. The actor has joined the Shinde Sena, and his induction is being seen as a big boost for the Mahayuti Alliance. Uh, the actor also reminded everyone about his close ties with Bala Sahib Thakre, and affirmed that he will work for the growth of arts and culture in Maharashtra. According to sources, Govinda could contest the upcoming Lok Sabha elections from the Mumbai Northwest seat. This will see a direct competition. between uddhav sena's amol kirtikar and the bollywood star of yester years remember he was earlier with the congress party but now after a 15 years hiatus coming in and joining the shinde sena have a look at this report bada abhineta govinda ab unka jo hai pardarpan dobara se rajneeti mein hone ja raha hai pehle congress ab eknath shinde ki shiv sena kya kuch kahe वो चौदहवीं लोकसभा थी आज चौदह वर्ष बाद मैं इस पक्ष में आया हूं और इस कृपा का मैं धन्यवाद देता हूं पिछले नौ दस वर्ष में जो आदरणीय मोदी जी की राज्य में जो प्रोग्रेस हुई है और जो यहां पे हो रही है ये दो वर्ष में हम लोगों ने जो देखा है बहुत शुभ है मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि ये बहुत आगे निकलेंगे और साथ में काम करने के लिए जो मौका दिया है मैं धन्यवाद देता हूँ उनका एक के बाद एक कांग्रेस पार्टी के तमाम नेता जो हैं वो छोड़ करके जा रहे हैं चाहे मिलिंद देवरा हो अशोक चौहान हो आपने भी कांग्रेस को अपना योगदान दिया है ऐसे स्थिति में जिस प्रकार से कांग्रेस पार्टी का पतन हो रहा है और जिस प्रकार से आपने भी पार्टी को छोड़ा आपको लगता है कांग्रेस का कोई भविष्य नहीं है सुनिए सुनिए मेरी बात जो मैंने जिस समय के लिए साथ में जोड़ा था वो मैं समय पूरा करके निकला उसके बाद तेरह वर्ष मैं कभी उस तरफ देखा भी नहीं राइट और मेरी तरफ भी कहीं देखा नहीं है गया है कहीं किसी का मैं कह नहीं रहा हूँ नाम नहीं लेता हूँ मैं कभी किसी का और बदनामी ही फालतू में कभी सब्जेक्ट में डिस्कस नहीं करता हूँ तो मैं चौदह वर्ष बाद मुझे ऐसा लगा कि मैं इसमें जुड़ जाऊँ ये मुझे अच्छा लगा जैसे उस समय वहाँ लगा था तो जुड़ गया उत्तर पश्चिम की अगर बात करें उत्तर पश्चिम सीट को लेकर के क्या आप आग्रहित हैं कि आप चुनाव लड़ेंगे क्योंकि तो आपकी पॉपुलैरिटी भी बहुत है आप उनका प्रश्न मुझे पूछ रहे हैं वो उन्हें पूछिए आप पॉपुलैरिटी आपकी बहुत है आपको प्यार भी बहुत मिला है जी मिला है और मैंने सेवा प्र, मैं सेवा प्रदान कर सकता था कि अब ये देखा जाएगा ना राइट डे आफ्टर यूनियन मिनिस्टर अमित शाह हिंटेड एट रिवोकेशन ऑफ AFSPA in Jammu and Kashmir Mehboob Mufti has said that PDP supports removal of AFSPA adding that it was the only demand PDP had when they were in alliance with the BJP Mufti further lashed out at the party saying this could be an act to gain votes listen in A day after Union Home Minister Amit Shah dropped a big hint over Centre Mulling AFSPA revocation in Jammu and Kashmir, PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti has come out and said that PDP's primary demand was AFSPA's removal from the valley. Mehbooba Mufti also slammed BJP and termed the latest move a big move by the BJP just to gain votes. ये जम्मू कश्मीर के लोगों की बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट डिमांड रही है और कई सालों से रही है और PDP इसकी हर वक्त वकालत करती रही है और यही वजह है कि जब हमने बीजेपी के साथ अलायंस किया तो उस अलायंस एजेंडा ऑफ अलायंस का ये बहुत बड़ा हिस्सा था 
تو اب ہم یہ سوچ رہے ہیں کہ بات الیکشن کے وقت انہوں نے کی ہے کیا یہ واقعی سیریس ہے یا یہ ایک جملہ ہے انہوں نے کہا تھا پندرہ لاکھ روپے ہم ہر غریب کے اکاؤنٹ میں جمع کریں گے ایسا تو کچھ بھی نہیں ہوا دا پی ڈی پی چیف ہٹ آؤٹ ایٹ دا بی جے پی اوور ادر ایشوز ایڈنگ دیٹ دا بی جے پی فیل ٹو کیپ سیورل آف اٹس پرامس بیورو رپورٹ ریپبلک ٹی وی All right, we slip uh, again into a short break, but come back on the other side with yet another controversy that has hit Ashoka University as students resort to posh casties raise anti-Brahmin slogans. And this kind of a forex case, uh, Moa Moitra skips CD summons, also seen evading Republic's direct questions. Good evening and welcome ladies and gentlemen. Things have got really complicated today for Arvind Kejriwal. He put together all the lawyers, he put together some of the most formidable lawyers in India to fight his case. And these criminal lawyers, the topmost in the country, gave everything they had to defend him. Everything they had to question his arrest. They put forth all their arguments, but they still lost in court. They question the use of approvers, they question the timing of the arrest, they question the intent of the agency, but they still lost in the court. Loss after loss after loss after loss in court for Arvind Kejriwal and the Aam Aadmi Party. Now viewers, if there is no scam in Liquor Gate, why do the biggest lawyers of the country lose in court when they stand up to fight for the Aam Aadmi Party? Are the courts biased too? Or is it the reality that there is too much evidence that the agencies have shown and the agencies have shared with the courts, with the judges, which makes even giving bail impossible for the court? Consider this, they are not even getting bail. Manish Sodeya, Satendra Jain, Sanjay Singh, Arvind Kejriwal denied bail inside jail. The denial of interim relief by the Delhi High Court in the case of Kejriwal's arrest is yet another courtroom loss for the Aam Aadmi Party. Now, anytime the Aam Aadmi Party tells you there is no scam, just ask one question. If there is no scam, how come you are always losing in court? And we all know that in every case of arrest and bail, in every case of arrest and bail, the courts look at only one fact. The courts ask whether there is a prima facie case that can be built against the accused. If there is no prima facie case, you get bail. But here there is a prima facie case. There is a lot of scam. There is a crores of rupees which have been made. Hundreds of crores. The situation is so complicated for Arvind Kejriwal now that unless he wins tomorrow, when his matter for continued custody comes up for hearing, unless he gets relief tomorrow, he could potentially be looking at spending the next few months minimum during election season in jail. And today his only MP from Punjab has quit and joined the BJP. The crisis for Kejriwal may be bigger than the AAP is projecting it to be. But more importantly, There is no wave of public sympathy or mass protest against his arrest in Liquor Gate. Where are the people? Where are the mass protests? Are people outraging across the country? No. Also, most importantly, stunts don't work either in these kind of situations. You can do stunts, but people stop responding. And when people stop responding, you know the cry wolf story. Today, his wife came and put out a video saying, Tomorrow, my husband Arvind Kejriwal will reveal where the real money of the liquor gate scam went. But we all know that also is just a stunt, Mrs. Kejriwal. We know it's a stunt. And stunts, whether you put it or Arvind Kejriwal put it, start failing when the people don't respond. The fact of the matter is, Aam Aadmi Party and Sunita Kejriwal should know there is no excitement over this promise that Arvind Kejriwal will reveal where the scam money went from, went to. Nobody is interested. Here is the overall picture for the Aam Aadmi Party. One, a failing legal strategy. Two, no mass outrage. And you are running out of options and you are running out of stunts as well. But tonight I would like you to consider one more thing. Where is the opposition support for Arvind Kejriwal? Nothing, not there at all. One day, two days, a little bit of lip service, a few tweets. But beyond lip service, all the other opposition leaders...
The Rao's Avenue Court has granted a four-day extended custody of Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal to the Enforcement Directorate. Kejriwal will be in the Enforcement Directorate's custody till the 1st of April. After Rao's Avenue Court extended the ED's custody of Arvind Kejriwal, the Delhi Chief Minister alleged a political conspiracy behind his arrest. Kejriwal said the public will give a befitting answer to this. सरकार जो है वो जेल से नहीं चलेगी वॉट वुड यू लाइक टू से ऑन दिस एल जी कह रहे सरकार जेल से नहीं चलेगी While defending himself during the hearing in the Rao's Avenue court Arvind Kejriwal said that no court has proven him guilty and charges against him are false. While Arvind Kejriwal was arguing his case in front of the court he engaged in a fiery exchange of words with the enforcement directorate ED alleged that Arvind Kejriwal is not cooperating and that no chief minister is above the law. The Delhi High Court dismissed a PIL seeking the removal of Aam Aadmi Party leader Arvind Kejriwal from the post of Chief Minister. The court claimed that there was no scope for judicial interference in the case. While seeking additional 7-day remand of Arvind Kejriwal, ED stated that the data on one mobile phone belonging to Kejriwal's wife has been extracted and is being analyzed. Arvind Kejriwal's wife Sunita Kejriwal was also present at the Rao's Avenue court for Kejriwal's hearing Sunita Kejriwal said that the Delhi chief minister is being harassed and his health is deteriorating I'm very happy that you are political party concern aapke CM ko bahut tang kiya ja raha hai bahut pareshan kiya ja raha hai janta jawab degi aap apni baat rakh diye bata to diya hai unko bahut pareshan kiya ja raha hai bahut tang kar rahe hain unko बताया की जो अभिजुक्त है शराब घोटाले के उनके जो प्रेम पत्र बाहर ये पढ़ रहे हैं उनके पार्टी के लोग उसको लेकर जांच की मांग की है क्योंकि हमारी जानकारी के हिसाब से कानून की कुछ परिभाषाएं जिसको सबको मानना होता है और इस तरह के प्रेम पत्र वहाँ से निकल नहीं सकते तो हमने उनकी जांच की मांग की है कि इनकी जांच की जाए और जिन्होंने प्रेम पत्र पढ़ के सुनाए उनकी भूमिका की भी जांच की जाए अगर वहाँ से नहीं निकल सकते तो भी कैसे आए देखिए जो हमारी जानकारी है मेरे साथ हमारे एडवोकेट्स भी थे जो उन्होंने हमें बताया है कि जब कोई आरोपी अभियुक्त हिरासत में होता है तो जिसकी कस्टडी में होता है बिना उसकी अटेस्टेशन के कोई पत्र आ नहीं सकता तो हम ये जो पत्र दिखा रहे हैं फर्जी हैं नकली हैं सिर्फ अपने आका का महिमा मंडन करने की गाथा है On ED is please seeking extension of Kejriwal's custody Aam Aadmi Party legal head Sanjeev Nasir said ED kept on questioning Kejriwal and waited for him to take top AAP leader's name he also alleged that ED has not been able to prove the 100 crore rupee scam On India summons US diplomat over comments on Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's arrest MEA spokesperson Randeep Jaiswal said The recent remarks by the state department are unwarranted In India legal processes are driven only by the rule of law Anyone who has similar ethos especially fellow democracies should have no difficulty in appreciating this fact India is proud of its independent and robust democratic institutions we are committed to protect them from any form of undue external influences mutual respect and understanding form the foundation of international relations and states are expected to be respectful of the sovereignty and internal affairs of others enforcement directorate quizzes aam aadmi party goa president amit palekar in connection with a money laundering case in delhi liquor scam 
Aam Aadmi Party in Odisha's Bhubaneswar observed fast in protest against Kejriwal's arrest by the Enforcement Directorate. Bollywood actor Govinda has made a political comeback ahead of 2024 Lok Sabha elections. Govinda has joined Eknath Shinde's Shiv Sena. He has been inducted to the party by meeting the Chief Minister Eknath Shinde. चौदह वर्ष बाद मैं इस पक्ष में आया हूं और इस कृपा का मैं धन्यवाद देता हूं पिछले नौ दस वर्ष में जो आदरणीय मोदी जी की राज्य में जो प्रोग्रेस हुई है और जो यहां पे हो रही है ये दो वर्ष में हम लोगों ने जो देखा है बहुत शुभ है मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि ये बहुत आगे निकलेंगे Over 100 prominent lawyers penned a letter to the Chief Justice of India expressing concerns over the attempts to undermine the judiciary's integrity by a vested interest group. On the letter penned by over 100 lawyers, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on social media said to browbeat and bully others is the vintage Congress's culture. PM Modi added that Congress shamelessly want commitment from others for their selfish interests. but this is from any commitment towards the nation expel tmc leader mawa moitra skipped summons issued by the enforcement directorate in forex violation case mawa moitra cited that she will be campaigning at the krishnanagar constituency for the upcoming lok sabha polls telangana chief minister revant reddy cast his vote at the kondagal MPDO office for the MLC by elections of Mehboob Nagar Former BJD leader Siddhan Mohapatra and Padma Awardi Dr Damayanti Beshra joined Bharatiya Janata Party in Delhi today both the leaders met the BJP national president JP Nadda On the upcoming Lok Sabha elections JJP leader and former deputy chief minister of Haryana Dushyant Chautala took a jab at the Congress saying it is clear that this is Congress's last election he also added that JJP will contest on all 10 seats in Haryana and candidates will be announced soon Congress ke andar ek cheez to saaf samne aa rahi hai ki pure desh mein Congress ke din ko hum diggaj kya karte the wo sare dar rahe hain और ये चीज साफ कर देती है कि कांग्रेस का ये अंतिम चुनाव कि सभी दस लोकसभा सीटों पर न्यायिक जनता पार्टी मजबूत मजबूत हो पा रही है मजबूती से उन सीटों को जीतने का भी काम करें Days after Navin Jindal joined hands with the BJP after quitting Congress his mother and former Haryana minister Savitri Jindal also quit the Grand Old Party Delhi LG VK Saxena sought a detailed investigation report from Delhi Police Commissioner into the derogatory post made by Congress leader Supriya Shrinet against Kangana Ranaut. Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Randeep Jaiswal has once again affirmed that Arunachal Pradesh was is and will remain an integral part and an inalienable part of India. China may repeat its baseless claims as many times as they want that is not going to change our position arunachal pradesh was is and will remain and always remain an integral and inalienable part of india the ministry of home affairs extended the armed forces special act in three districts in arunachal pradesh for a period of 6 months they have declared the state as disturbed area and it will remain in force until it is withdrawn On Baltimore bridge collapse incident Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Randeep Jaiswal shares an update saying 20 nationals on board the ship are in touch with the Indian mission Randeep Jaiswal said one of the crew members was injured and was also given stitches because of the injury The first aircraft LA5033 of Tejas MK1A series took to the skies today from Hindustan Aeronautics Limited facility In Bengaluru it was a successful sortie with a flying time of 18 minutes. 
Defence Minister Rajnath Singh said centre is ready to make changes in the Agnivir recruitment scheme if necessary. The Defence Minister also assured that the future of Agnivir is secure. The Indian Army conducted a joint training program with the Jammu and Kashmir Police to further boost the operational capabilities of both the forces. The training is focused on operational tactics, intelligence sharing and also counter-terrorism strategies drawing on the Indian Army's extensive expertise in these fields. During an anti-Naxal operation, Naxal fired indiscriminately which was retaliated strongly by the security forces. The search has led to the seizure of a large amount of Naxal belongings such as wires, gelatin sticks, batteries, solar panels and more. The MDMK MP Ganesha Murthy, who was hospitalized after an alleged suicide attempt on March 24th, passed away this morning due to a cardiac arrest. Ganesha Murthy was undergoing treatment where his health condition deteriorated, leading to his death. Enforcement Directorate has summoned former Uttarakhand Minister and Congress leader Harak Singh Rawat under PMLA asking him to appear for questioning on April 2nd. The summons is related to the illegal occupation of forest department land. International team of doctors visiting hospital in central Gaza were stunned by the constant stream of wounded Palestinian children. Hospitals in Gaza are overwhelmed by the casualties from Israel's shelling and bombardment. Over 3,000 Jordanians demonstrated near the Israeli embassy in Amman in response to the war in Gaza and expressed their support for Hamas's actions. They also chanted pro-Hamas slogans and demanded Egypt to end the siege on Gaza and open the land crossing with Gaza Strip. Russia struck the northeastern city of Kharkiv with aerial bombs for the first time since 2022. The attack killed at least one civilian and wounded 16 others. The airstrikes also caused widespread damage, hitting several residential buildings and also damaging the city's Institute for Emergency Surgery. Russian President Vladimir Putin visited the Ministry of Defense military base and inspected new helicopter systems and missiles. Putin was shown the X-39 missile, a multi-purpose projectile that allows the military to operate against armoured vehicles and fortified areas. The UK Minister for the Middle East met the Egyptian Foreign Minister and the Arab League Secretary General in Cairo to discuss the crisis in Gaza. Discussions focused extensively on what's happening in Gaza and the consultation between the two countries to stop the ongoing war. Belgian Foreign Minister visited Kibbutz in Israel near the Gaza Strip on Thursday that was attacked by Hamas militants on October 7th. The Foreign Minister also visited the site of an open-air music festival in southern Israel that was attacked by the Hamas militants, killing scores of people and abducted men, women, children and the elderly. Smoke was seen rising from the Muwasi camp where thousands of displaced Palestinians are staying in the direction of Khan Yunus. An helicopter flying overhead heard the, the, uh, uh, appeared to be shooting in the same direction. Attack on Muwasi comes after it was designated as a safe zone by Israel in December. Twelve people were injured and six residential buildings were damaged as a result of missile strike on Ukraine. According to authorities, the attack was likely carried out using an Iskander M ballistic missile. The authorities added that Ukrainian air defense intercepted 26 out of 28 drones launched by Russian forces. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky appointed the new head of the country's foreign intelligence. Zelensky called him a qualified person who perfectly understands intelligence activities and the key goals of Zelensky's state. Now, Zelensky also said that Ukrainian intelligence should work everywhere in the world. Palestinian Foreign Minister met his Belgian counterpart in Ramallah in Israeli-occupied West Bank. The meeting focused on strengthening bilateral partnerships and addressing the ongoing war in Gaza Strip. Now, Belgium, like most European countries, is calling for an immediate ceasefire to the war between Israel and Hamas. 
Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni is on a two-day visit to Lebanon during which she met Lebanese Prime Minister Najib Mikati. Her visit comes as tension has been on the rise along the Lebanon-Israel border. Investigation of the Baltimore bridge collapse picked up speed as divers recovered two bodies from the water. Investigators are also collecting evidence from the cargo ship that ploughed into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge and caused its collapse. The cargo ship that caused the Baltimore bridge collapse was carrying hazardous materials. Authorities say that the ship was carrying 56 containers which had corrosives, flammables and lithium-ion batteries. While investigation can take up to 24 months, the preliminary report will be released in two to four weeks. The federal government will provide a $1.5 billion loan to restart a nuclear power plant in southwestern Michigan. It would be the first nuclear power plant to be reopened in the U.S. The plant will be restarted by late 2025 following support from the state of Michigan and the Biden administration. French President Emmanuel Macron called the proposed deal between the European Union and the South American trade bloc uh, Mercosur terrible. Macron called the deal outdated and said it deserves a new start to take climate change into account. On Sunday, millions of voters in Turkey will head to polls to elect mayors and administrators in local elections. The election is expected to gorge uh, President Erdogan's popularity as his ruling party tries to win back key cities it lost five years ago. Over 3,000 people displaced by Lahain's uh, wildfires are still living in hotels more than seven months after the August blaze. The state and federal governments are building modular transitional housing units for displaced residents and hope all displaced residents will leave the hotels by July 1st. Four people were killed and five were hurt in stabbings in northern Illinois. Police is questioning a suspect. One person is said to be in a critical condition while other four are said to be stable. The cops are questioning the suspect to find out the motive behind the stabbing. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk held talks with Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis in Warsaw. Both leaders held talks on row over grain imports that has caused mass protests by farmers. Lawmakers in the lower house of the French parliament adopted a bill that would ban discrimination over the texture, length, color or style of someone's hair. Several French MPs voted to ban the discrimination. Amity has been ranked India's number one private university for the 11th year by India Today, a testimony to Amity's world-class education whilst imbibing values and sanskars in students. Congress ko jam se Karnataka me moka mila hai to inhone Karnataka ko apna ATM bana diya hai. Frisking has given way to F4 racing on the streets of Srinagar. Headlines now boast tourism figures, not terror fatalities. IED blast and stone pelting have given way to the world's highest rail bridge and a state-of-art movie hall. Kashmir stealing the spotlight even at the G20. Confident Home Minister on the improving situation. Kanunavastaki's 
हम सपोर्ट में सेंट्रल फोर्सेस से हिंदू धर्म में शक्ति शब्द होता है हम शक्ति से लड़ रहे हैं एक शक्ति से लड़ रहे हैं इंडी अलायंस ने अपना घोषणा पत्र शक्ति को खत्म करने के लिए किया है मैं इस चुनौती को स्वीकार करता हूं और मैं इन सबसे स्वरूप माताओं बहनों की रक्षा के लिए जान की बाजी लगा दूंगा Welcome back viewers after a break for almost 15 years Bollywood actor Govinda is back in the political arena the actor has joined hands with Shinde Sena and his induction is being seen as a big boost for the Mahayuti Alliance in Maharashtra the actor also reminded everyone about his close ties with Bala Saheb Thakre and affirmed that he will work for the growth of arts and culture in Maharashtra Now according to sources Govinda could contest the upcoming Lok Sabha elections from the Mumbai Northwest seat this will see a direct competition between Uddhav Sena's Amol Kirtikar and Govinda let's take a look at uh, Govinda's exclusive conversation with Republic TV अभिनेता Govinda अब उनका जो है पदार्पण दोबारा से राजनीति में होने जा रहा है पहले कांग्रेस अब एकनाथ शिंदे की शिवसेना क्या कुछ कहें वो चौदहवीं लोकसभा थी आज चौदह वर्ष बाद मैं इस पक्ष में आया हूं और इस कृपा का मैं धन्यवाद देता हूं पिछले नौ दस वर्ष में जो आदरणीय मोदी जी की राज्य में जो प्रोग्रेस हुई है और जो यहां पे हो रही है ये दो वर्ष में हम लोगों ने जो देखा है बहुत शुभ है मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि ये बहुत आगे निकलेंगे और साथ में काम करने के लिए जो मौका दिया है मैं धन्यवाद देता हूँ उनका एक के बाद एक कांग्रेस पार्टी के तमाम नेता जो हैं वो छोड़ करके जा रहे हैं चाहे मिलिंद देवरा हो अशोक चौहान हो आपने भी कांग्रेस को अपना योगदान दिया है ऐसे स्थिति में जिस प्रकार से कांग्रेस पार्टी का पतन हो रहा है और जिस प्रकार से आपने भी पार्टी को छोड़ा आपको लगता है कांग्रेस का कोई भविष्य नहीं है सुनिए सुनिए मेरी बात जो मैंने जिस समय के लिए साथ में जोड़ा था वो मैं समय पूरा करके निकला उसके बाद तेरह वर्ष मैं कभी उस तरफ देखा भी नहीं राइट और मेरी तरफ भी कहीं देखा नहीं है गया है कहीं किसी का मैं कह नहीं रहा हूँ नाम नहीं लेता हूँ मैं कभी किसी का और बदनामी फालतू में कभी सब्जेक्ट में डिस्कस नहीं करता हूँ तो मैं चौदह वर्ष बाद मुझे ऐसा लगा कि मैं इसमें जुड़ जाऊँ ये मुझे अच्छा लगा जैसे उस समय वहाँ लगा था तो जुड़ गया उत्तर पश्चिम की अगर बात करें उत्तर पश्चिम सीट को लेकर के क्या आप आग्रहित हैं क्या आप चुनाव लड़ेंगे क्योंकि आपकी पॉपुलैरिटी भी बहुत है आप उनका प्रश्न मुझे पूछ रहे हैं वो उन्हें पूछिए आप नहीं पॉपुलैरिटी आपकी बहुत है आपको प्यार भी बहुत मिला है जी मिला है और मैंने सेवा प्र... मैं सेवा प्रदान कर सकता था कि अब ये देखा जाएगा ना Now moving on ahead of the 2024 Lok Sabha polls massive anger is brewing among the TDP cadres and the supporters of N Ramakrishna Reddy now this comes after the TDP candidate was not given a ticket in the NDA supporters of Reddy hit the streets and also burnt cycles and also placards of TDP because the ticket has been instead offered to NDA candidate M Shivakrishnam Raju here's a quick report on that It, party cadres in protest hit the streets over Anna Party seat being offered to the BJP candidate. They burned cycles and placards of the party in strong opposition to the latest decision. This comes just days after 20 Telugu Desam leaders and their followers submitted resignation to party top brass. TDP has now joined hands with the NDA and will be contest uh, will be contesting all three together that is TDP Janasena and BJP will be contesting together in the state of Andhra Pradesh and that is the reason why we see that Anuparthi seat has now been given to the BJP as BJP will be contesting on 10 seats in the assembly polls and 6 seats in the parliament election uh, parliament uh, Lok Sabha elections we'll have to wait and watch how it turns out to be this comes just ahead of the elections this is an Shamit, for Republic 
Now let's take a look at other important stories ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. Former BJD leader Siddhan Mohapatra and Padma Awardi Dr. Damayanti joined the Bharatiya Janata Party in the national capital today. Both the leaders met BJP national president JP Nadda. Karnataka minister and Congress leader Priyank Kharge lashed out at Kalaburgi MP saying that the MP is being supported by CBI, ED, IT and the election commission Kharge alleged that he has been receiving threat letters saying that Dalits should not be speaking out this loud. Again, I have received a threat letter uh, from Manuadi saying that uh, a Dalit should not be speaking out this loud. A Dalit should not be uh, uh, coming out into politics. And if you uh, continue to speak out, we will have to uh, ensure that uh, we, uh, you, you, we encounter you. Expect TMC MP Mawa Moitra starts her election campaign from Nayachar Island in Kaliganj Assembly seat. Mawa's, Mo Mawa's uh, TMC Lok Sabha candidate from Krishna Nagar constituency. NCP Sharad Pawar faction spokesperson Vidya Chavan said that all seats of North uh, East Mumbai belongs to Sharad Pawar faction and if they are not uh, given to them, leaders will contest from Central Mumbai. है उसमें से जो नॉर्थ ईस्ट मुंबई की सीट है वो राष्ट्रवादी कांग्रेस के हक की सीट है और वो राष्ट्रवादी कांग्रेस को मिलनी चाहिए ऐसी हमारी मांग है अगर वो शिवसेना नहीं देना चाहती है तो फिर मध्य मुंबई है हमारी सेंट्रल मुंबई जो है वहां से नीलेश भोसले हमारे इच्छुक है अगर नहीं देते तो सोचेंगे क्या करना है JDS candidate for Hassan Prajwal Revana submitted his nomination papers to the district electoral officer Prajwal Revana is seeking re-election to the Lok Sabha. It's now time for the nation's sharpest opinion. From global headlines for incidents of stone pelting to hosting the world at the G20 from the weekly visuals of attacks at the Indian Armed Forces by Pakistanis to the first ever Formula 4 car racing event. Kashmir has changed. Ladies and gentlemen, from the grenade attack ripping through the Regal Cinema in Srinagar to getting its first multiplex in 2020, the face of Jammu and Kashmir has transformed under the Modi government after the abolition specially of Article 370 and 35A. For decades after decades, a regurgitated narrative was thrust a lie told a billion times, projected and amplified by a globally funded well-oiled machinery that Kashmir, that the problem of Kashmir shall never be solved. We were told it was too complex a conflict for India to find a solution to. And yet, ladies and gentlemen, Narendra Modi has delivered the answers. Four and a half years after the revocation of 370, Kashmir has been more peaceful, more integrated than it has ever been through independent India's history. And that is a proud moment for every Indian. So, and this brings me to the news point today. When Amit Shah says today that the government is actually considering a rollback of AFSPA in Kashmir, I do not see this as a loose comment or a comment linked only to the upcoming elections. The Mufti Club says that it is a pre-election comment. But I believe there has to be more to it. It is a well-thought comment because history is proof to the fact that the Modi policy in Kashmir is not a knee-jerk one. It is one that goes deep into strategic thinking, winning of trust and creation of security buffers to put India first. So when Amit Shah makes that statement, it is with a whole lot thought out in my view. It's a different matter that it has sent Mehbooba Mufti and Omar Abdullah into a grand meltdown because the B
Thank you for joining us on Republic TV. It's 8 p.m. I'm Niranjan and a video, several videos in fact, from the Ashoka University campus have raised questions over the politicization of several campuses in India. We debate that tonight. Here are the headlines. Yet another controversy hits Ashoka University as students resort to posh casteism, raise anti Brahmin slogans. As 600 lawyers talk about pressure on Supreme Court, Prime Minister calls out the attempt to browbeat and bully. Big setback for Arvind Kejriwal as the Delhi court extends custody by four more days in connection with Likagate. United States tries to lecture India, calls for transparent legal process on Kejriwal's arrest, mentions Congress account freeze case. Hollywood actor Govinda joins Shiv Sena in the presence of Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde in Mumbai. Six Pakistani High Court judges have exposed ISI and have accused them of meddling in judicial matters. Anti Brahmin, anti Baniya casteist slogans being chanted by students at the Ashoka University campus. Let's play out the visuals of what happened at the Ashoka University campus, and uh, it's now the subject of a big debate. Reminds us of what happened on the JNU campus a few years back. In fact, it's uh, happened more than once on the JNU campus. Provocative slogans, anti caste slogans, anti-Brahmin, anti-Baniya. Brahmin, Baniya, Murdabad slogans in the Ashoka University campus as the ugly specter of casteism rearing its head once again, this time on the grounds of the Ashoka University. Once in the limelight for the political stances taken by its faculty, is now engulfed in a fiery controversy over unabashed casteist propaganda on its campus premises. Take a look at the video, some of the videos that have emerged from on campus of the Ashoka University. All right, let's go across. Uh, what, what, we'll also do, what we'll also do is I'll ask our teams to pull out those videos of what was chanted on campus. We'll play those videos out in just a while. Uh, let me introduce the panelists this evening. We have Deshwatan Nigam, political analyst. Vineet Goenka, political analyst. Professor Sandeep Yadav, who's a Dalit activist. And Zubair Memon, president of the Maharashtra Muslim Conference. Let me start with Deshwatan Nigam. Deshwatan Nigam, you've seen the video. It's all over social media. It's being debated. And when you talk about Ashoka University, it has been in the news for taking political stances, right? The university has now put out a statement and in their statement, they have said that the university will take up all measures to ensure peace and harmony in the campus is not disturbed, attaches great value to freedom of expression and a vigorous debate, but it also attaches great importance to mutual respect. Uh, do you sense that when you look at those videos? Well, sir, uh, you know, one thing is very clear. Uh, having known Ashoka University and some of their directors, it was a hotbed for leftist activities and some of the urban Nexus professors which were there, and they took anti-India stand on Kashmir also, and passed a resolution in a meeting once upon a time. 
So there was, there is a problem out there and uh, there is a uh, group active, very active out there, which wants to sow uh, seeds of division in our society, caste-based uh, decisions and those caste censors and everything. You have a right to protest, but you cannot hurt the sensibilities of the others and especially the sentiments and feelings of the others. You take up an issue, issue by issue, there is not a problem. You have a debate on caste censors. It's a private university, please understand. They have their own policy. If you have an issue, make a representation. And if you think your representation is not being heard, you have the court process, the judicial process available to you. But to, you know, demean Brahmins and Banyas and other sections and only a particular section is superior, no, that cannot be allowed. That can should not be allowed. In fact, I am rather worried uh, that the Ashoka University has not taken any action yet on these people. There are These are clear violations and the crimes under the IPC also. Uh, very since I am a lawyer, I can tell you that these are what they have said is a crime under the uh, Indian Penal Code as it exists now, and therefore a mere warning to these students who are taking a very polarized and divisive stand cannot be you know allowed to be brushed under the carpet. Mere warning, it's fine, but some action needs to be taken, especially ones who were in the forefront. Supreme Court is very clear when you take part in a protest, those even if you are not present, but if if uh, there are people who have organized it and if you are uh, part uh, and parcel without being in the front, people who are behind, they are also liable and punishable for the crimes that they are doing. Supreme Courts have, courts have laid guidelines for the, such kind of protests. So I, I am expecting far more, uh, you know, stricter action so that such kind of, you know, divisive and polarizing uh, comments and uh, statements are not made. And certainly you have your fundamental rights, but not at the cost of fundamental rights of others to disturb their fundamental rights. Supreme Court is very clear. You cannot be given unrestricted, uh, you know, fundamental rights where you have freedom to demean and abuse somebody else or somebody's sensibilities. And let us be very, very clear, such things cannot be permitted. We used to have such things in GNU. They have calmed down and, and uh, people are doing protests out there. There is no doubt about it. But they have moved away from abusive languages and things like that. And a lot of uh, faculties of the leftist organizations, they have joined Choka University. And I know them. The fact remains, and they are the ones who are behind it. They are the ones who are encouraging it. These students are mere pawns in their, you know, games uh, that they are playing. And it is these people who have to be identified, the teachers, the faculty members who are behind it, or the outsiders who could be involved, the outsiders of other, you know, outfits, student outfits, having affiliation to communist parties or other party should, should also be looked into it. It requires thorough investigation so that tomorrow, such kind of things may be uh, prevented from happening. Otherwise, there will be chaos if the other group, which is there, you know, also comes out with some kind of similar accusations. Then there will be clear fight in the campuses. It's a private university. It must understand it has a reputation to uh, save and uh, don't allow few students to tarnish the reputation of the Ashoka University. Niranjan. Yeah. You know, it's, it's caste hatred. Now, Professor Sandeep Yadav, you see the kind of slogans that are chanted, right? Brahmin Baniyavad, Murdabad. Yes. Targeting Brahmins, now Baniyas. Do you support this caste hatred on campus? See, uh, actually, uh, your, uh, first of all, today morning, one uh, picture came out. I wonder, you are not debating on that particular uh, topic because that's uh, basically defaming, that, that uh, picture defames a folk singer Neha Singh Rathor. Actually, that came from a media house, G News, and it says that, what is the sim similarity between, uh, they have displayed two pictures, uh, one Mia Khalifa and one Neha Singh Rathor, and uh, they are uh, seeking connections between these two photos, mm -hmm. uh, you know, unnecessarily. And that's true coming from a very irresponsible media house. So we, we must, uh, you know, debate those things also, which are defaming a girl, uh, a woman, a lady from our country. Uh, second thing, uh, our uh, panelists says, said that uh, the actions must be taken. Actually, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, an article was written by a very famous uh, journalist from Gujarat, Akar Patel, in 2009. 
28th August 2009, he wrote an article and the title of that uh, basically article is against, you know, is about Baniya Brahmin hegemony. I, I, I suppose that my friend has read, you know, read that article or you people, since you are from media, you must have read that article. And if you read that article, you won't question these, uh, you know, the, uh, like, uh, the, the slogans raised by the students. Basically, they are, they are, uh, they are, uh, 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 they are not against any community. They are against hegemony. Uh, be it uh, structural hegemony, social hegemony, cultural hege hegemony, or uh, economical hegemony. You know, who is controlling the country? So, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 those students, uh, they informed the university well in advance on three issues. The first issue was the uh, anonymous caste census of the university of the students, employees, uh, non-teaching employees and the teaching faculties. Because they know uh, in that university, majority of the students, teachers and the non-teaching staff are from the upper layer, upper class and caste of the society. So they must be facing the discrimination, especially the ethnic community students and the religious minority students, including the uh, Muslims, Christians and Sikhs. So uh, basically, and the second demand of them was, uh, second demand was that annual memorial, um, um, you know, uh, uh, Ambedkar Memorial Annual Lecture to be conducted by the university. And the third demand was to, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, basically that university, if you fail to pay your uh, uh, fee on time, uh, they, uh, you know, stop your particular, you know, certain services of the university. Like you can't uh, uh, join the, uh, like, uh, this uh, Google classes, mess and libraries. So they are devoid of certain things when, when they fail to submit their fee on time. So they were demanding against these three things and there is no equal opportunity sale. Though Asoka University is one of the reputed and one of the biggest and very, you know, probably the best uh, private universities in the country, uh, where uh, especially the students are from the privileged community, mm -hmm. though they are certain marginalized community students also. And you must, see, listen, let me complete. Uh, there are students also from upper caste, uh, progressive mindset also, who are uh, taking part in this uh, uh, protest. And second, uh, the, you know, the, the next point which I wanted to make, the first anti-Brahmin slogan was raised, a Brahmin himself. Uh, in uh, 1161, Basavanna was born in Karnataka. He, he opposed his own, uh, you know, privilege. Yes, he he denounced I'm, his own privilege. I, After that, I'm, many I'm, I'm social sitting, reformers I'm sitting came in Karnataka. and they... I'm, I'm sitting in Karnataka. Let me tell you, Professor, Professor. Yes. Professor, I'm sitting in Karnataka and I, I, I know about yes. Baswanna. Please don't tell me the history of uh, Baswanna, right? Let me tell you, it is amounting to caste hatred. No, I'm hatred. not telling you the history of Baswanna. It is nothing but caste uh, hatred. Those... No, no, no I, not I, am, I, am not, I am not, I am not See, making... See, since you are I'm sitting not, in Karnataka, not, you must be knowing denying. about... No, I am not denying. Yeah, I, I am not... I, of course, know, but I am also not denying that, you know, there is some sort of discrimination that, that is... Report. We are, we've reported that as well. There is discrimination, caste discrimination in some parts of India. I agree with that. But you can't... You will be lighting a fire... If students on campus caste, uh, you know, are, are chanting anti-casteist, I mean anti-caste slogans, anti-Brahmin slogans, anti-Baniya slogans, right? You can't encourage that. Even remotely, Vinit Goenka, this is exactly what India has fought in the last two decades, two and three decades, right? We've said merit first, not caste they are first. They're saying what it's they're saying. They're not saying what they're witnessing. Vinit. No, no, no. Who's no. witnessed it? See, listen. Uh, merit, merit is consist of three things. Who has witnessed it? Merit is consist of three things. Opportunity. Sorry. Sir, the question is for me. Can I answer it, please? Who Hello. has witnessed it? Who has witnessed casteism? What are you saying? Yeah. Vinit, let Vinit, let Vinit get his say to panelists. No, have uh, let Vinit. me... Uh, uh, Professor, please extend the... Let Vinit come in and then you respond to him. Vinit. Please. Yeah. Niranjanji, Ram Ram to you, Ram Ram to all my co-panelists and all the viewers are watching us right now. Now, you have, uh, I'm sure a professor has read the famous book called as Enemies Within. Because if he was talking about some unknown author from Gujarat, one article, I have not read it, but I'm sure the book which has sold more than 27,000 copies, Enemies Within, you would have certainly read it. In that book, Enemies Within, two, three clarifications are the professor which will help you. One, please do not call Muslims as to be minority because they are second majority of this country and don't insult them. A. B. If this is an informed student, I can understand. If the student wants to have a shortcut fail in the era of social media, I can yet understand. But if it is a planned doctrine, 
and win by elections to, un to undermine the entire country, then it is a concern. More concern is if the students have become pawns in the hands of people like you who understand the gravity of the situation and deliberately been pushed against one particular community, then it is a concern. Let me tell you one more thing. If there are divisions or there are casteism in Hindus, why didn't the student talk about the casteism in Muslim society? How, you know, Ahmadiyas, Bohris, Chiliyas, Devbandis, Chistis, Sufis are been suffering is in the hand of Sunni. Why don't they talk about that? Then I would have understood, yes, they are talking about class and caste differentiation in to society. Had they talked about, you know, orthodox, evangelist, Syrians, Protestants of the Christians. The reason they are specifically talking about only Sanatan caste is because they have been doctrined for this in the election era. The intention is ill, sir. It is enemies within who are trying to push this innovation students against this. Number two, for your viewers, Niranjan, I should tell, in Ashoka is a private university and I was just checking on internet. What is the fee structure? The first year fees itself is 11 lakhs yeah. 40 thousand. So if there is fees, is 11 lakh 40 thousand has been written here for first year. This thing. How do you say that that society they were unable to pay their fees? They, and the fees has to be paid in advance. It is written there. So professor, please do some homework before you come to national televisions like this. The intention of these four, five, fifteen students were deliberately to create chaos. Have a shortcut fame. My advice through this channel to those students will be concentrate on your future, study well. And my also second request to Ashoka initially should be identify those students, take whatever disciplinary actions which is mentioned in the manuals of the university. Number three to the SHO, station house officer of the relevant police station is to invoke all the provisions where they are trying to create rights. In the election era, all these tools should be done. So, Professor, one, if you know them, do not misinform them. They have a bright future. They are sharp students who have got selected into one of the good universities. Number two, to the university, involve all the disciplinary actions which are there. Number three, to the SHO, take actions so that that creates an example to another students. And four, Professor, please tell me how many caste Islam has and how many caste Christianity has. And do they ever speak about this? And do you ever speak against their uh, ill treatments? For God's sake, right now, tell that. Okay, well, Sanatan, we differentiation karne ki koshish karo. See, listen, can you hear no, me? No, let me can see, see, see Zubair, my, is Zubair, is if, if they won the caste census. Uh, can, can I just get in a view of Zubair also, Professor? Be 